There are two things that are pretty common about the topic of this video. Number one, it's pretty common for people to ask about plugging in a space heater into a smart plug. And number two, it's pretty common to see these exploded. And today I'm going to explain to you why that happens and how you can do this in a safer way. I used to have a really technical job and actually I still kind of have a pretty technical job by trying to explain things like this. What I've told you in the past here on Automate Your Life is that I used to do a lot of industrial automation, but the latter half of my career was spent much more focused on something called electrical protection. And as a computer engineer, well, it wasn't a big stretch, but I still had to be taken under the wing by this gentleman who still a great friend of mine. And he told me one thing about electrical protection and he said, it's an art form just as much as it is a science. And I didn't understand that until I got into some of the real detailed components of this. But the piece behind it that is scientific starts and ends with this graph. And this is one of the most confusing graphs out there. And it took me years to really figure out what was going on. Now, this is called a time current curve or a TCC curve. What it is describing is how much amperage over time a device can handle and that's a different length of time and at different amperage levels. So what I hope you're noticing on this graph is that it's pretty close to a typical 15 amp breaker that we would have on most circuits in North America and this doesn't mean this is what you have in your home but I think the one component that you should be seeing here is that more time could be spent slightly over 15 amps than I think most people expect. I think in most cases, people in their homes think 15.1 amps equals immediate trip. So I want to stop here and make sure that you guys really understand what this curve is doing and I promise there's a reason for it. Now, I've created a couple of examples here to explain how these breakers work and that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a breaker at two times the amperage rating. That's what this line that you see the orange line there. That's what it represents on the graph. This breaker would trip between 40 seconds and nine seconds. So it has that big variability of time down at the bottom of this graph. I've also shown a 10 times amp rating. So yes, in the case of a 15 amp breaker, this would mean 150 amps and that would be a really bad thing. And that's what kind of indicates this breaker is not necessarily for a home situation. We couldn't handle that in our home, but it trips in that situation between 0.5 seconds and what we call instantaneously or within a cycle. In general, what can happen is that you can run for longer periods of time, slightly over that 15 amps or right at that 15 amps. Now, one of the really tricky things about these graphs is that you have to add in the other components on your system to understand how well things are protected. Now, that means that every component that you plug into your wall has a curve like this. And actually something like this wise plug will have a damage curve and that means that for a device like the wise plug you would be able to see how much amperage in how long it would take to actually start to damage the device and usually there's a bit of a range there it's not like okay 15.1 amps in 0.1 of a second the thing's gonna explode no you'll have a bit of a range there Okay, now let's stop here again and simplify the discussion because I know those other graphs are really complex, but this is just a simplified curve where current is increasing as we go to the right and time is increasing as we go up. Now, what you're seeing is that breaker in green. And so I've just modeled it very simply with a straight line and we're saying basically as current increases time will decrease for that device to trip now unfortunately in this case and this is going to be very very typical for most of the smart plugs on the market we can see that it is a lower current 
that will damage this smart plug and it's also lower time generally with that lower current so what's happening here is before we get to the number that trips our breaker our smart plug is already damaged now when you look at the specifications for any smart plug, and I'm gonna to continue to use the Wise one. This is the one that I see that gets exploded very often because people are looking for an inexpensive one and then they go and they plug in a giant heater and then that's what happens. It's not saying there's anything really wrong with this, but when you look at their specifications, all you see is this is a 15 amp maximum smart plug. You don't see this whole curve. But one of the interesting things about electricity is that it heats up things and so when over a long period of time you plug in something like a space heater or something that uses a lot of amperage well then you're heating up all of the components inside this and that happens over an extended period of time now what that heat does to an electrical device is it actually starts to degrade this damage curve or that curve that you're reliant on. Now we have to talk about three other components of this discussion and we just talked about the electrical components heating up over time but actually all of these graphs and all of these ratings are based on a specific temperature and when it gets hotter in the room that graph again can go out the door and the damage curve can decrease. The other component is called arcing and this is really fancy. You see this on great explosion videos and what happens is if you leave a little gap or you don't have a great connection between your plug and the wall or your plug and your smart plug whatever it can arc a little bit and that really raises the current and therefore starts to melt components the third component is called inrush and this is when you first power on a device what actually happens is it basically gets brought up to the voltage of the whole system so in north america that's 120 volts now in order to do that a lot of current suddenly rushes in and that's why they call it inrush now for a motor just to give you an idea of how impactful this can be over just a few cycles, this is six and a half times the amperage amount that you are rated for. There's also just the ability for you to put too big of a space heater on your 15 amp smart plug. And that's honestly what's gonna happen a lot of the times. You're just gonna put something too big on there. But you also have this degradation and your breaker may not be protecting this little smart plug. And so this is impacting how companies are treating smart plugs and how they're treating devices that you've named as a heater or another high amperage device. And I think about Google's new feature that they have where you can actually schedule their voice assistant to turn something on or off later in the day. So you can actually say, you know what, turn this on in 15 minutes. But if you tell Google that it's a heater, they won't do it. And if you tell them that it's a light bulb, they will. Well, see, they understand this from a purely engineering standpoint. They understand that they don't really know whether or not this is correctly protected for your space heater, especially over an extended period of time. They don't want to be the ones having you turn that on. Now, the other component to space heaters, and this is something, if you go and you look up statistics on how fires start, I mean, we used to have this with Christmas trees because they had those hot uh, bulbs on there. The uh, <laughs> I can't even remember the name of the type of bulb. Tell me in the comments. But... You know, you used to have those old bulb types that got hot and then the Christmas trees would light on fire. Well, it's kind of the same thing here. Space heaters in general tend to be pretty hot to the touch. And actually one of the biggest ways that people start fires in their own homes is leaving a space heater unattended, which you can totally do with smart systems, and then having something catch on fire that is either on them or they've fallen over, they've been knocked over, and they're just on something and lighting it on fire. So we've talked about all these problems that we have and the reasons why they are, and if you have more questions, of course, leave them in the comments down below. But the 
point we have to get to are recommendations. And so my first recommendation for you, if you want to use a smart heater in or a space heater in a smart way, well, then my first recommendation is to make sure that you're getting something that is not hot to the touch. And I get on people for buying this product, but there's a really good reason for it. And this is the Dyson Hot and Cool, their fans, and they recently got Google Assistant integration, but they are so incredibly expensive that I have trouble recommending it, except in a case like this. And you see, they're not getting really hot to the touch and they've got a tip over protection where if they're tipped over, they're gonna turn off. So they're not gonna be leaning on something and lighting it on fire. Plus, yeah, they're just not getting that hot. Now, the amperage draw is also not that high. So the electrical components are not heating up that much. So if there was ever a reason to go and spend that kind of ludicrous level of money, this is the reason. This video was part of a series of videos that are highly, highly technical here on Automate Your Life. And the idea is sometimes we need this kind of knowledge to uh, really manage a smart home in a safe and an effective way. So up on screen is a playlist of other videos just like this where you're gonna get that really in-depth technical knowledge that will help you go forward and build the right smart home. So thanks for watching today, guys. And of course, don't hate, automate.